That short clip is from a new film on Netflix called His Three Sisters. And as you can see, they don't much like each other. Yeah, uh, this is uh, uh, three daughters of a man who was dying. And uh, they're obviously not the best of friends and are getting together to be with him in his final moments. Take a look. I understand what a stressful situation it is. It's very nice that you're all here at a time like this. We all want your father to transition as peaceful as possible. It's nice that it's us. This is the way it should be, the way he would want it. So you've seen the girls now in their worst moments yelling at each other and their nice, calm moments sitting around contemplating poor dad uh, in the other room who's dying uh, and talking with the hospice uh, agent. But what you don't know is that most of the movie is these three women at each other's throats. They don't like each other. They don't know each other. They're, uh, they aren't they're what? They're three daughters from two different wives and different marriages, and their father's in the next room as a vegetable and nothing but beeping. And this, I have to tell you, as much as I am going to tease you and say I did like the movie, as much as I will change my opinion initial opinion, I found this movie so, what's the word, annoying. It was annoying. The women were annoying. The characters were annoying. The plot was annoying. The fact that they're all cramped into a little New York apartment while their father's down the hall dying was annoying. I was annoyed through most of this movie. You know, I bet you were even annoyed by the green bench on the concrete pillars uh, that was very park-like in uh, the New York City that you and I both grew up in. Uh, and I bet you were annoyed by that too, as as was I initially. Yeah. yeah. Yo, when did you, approximately how long did it take you to, to realize that the filmmaker was actually being brilliant in showing us and making us feel annoyed at, Yes, a truly annoying situation. We were feeling what these women were feeling, what they were going through. Their father's dying in the next room. They're complete strangers to each other, and they can't relate to each other, and they can't relate to each other as sisters. And all of a sudden, I had an epiphany. Mine was about three quarters of the way through the movie. I had an epiphany that said to myself, holy cow, this guy's a genius. I have been feeling exactly what he wanted me to feel, which is what these women are feeling. They're alienated be from each other. They're, they're dysfunctional. They're, they're uncomfortable. And that's the way I felt for three quarters of the movie. And I, I woke up, I realized, holy cow, this guy's great. Well, I'll tell you, this is one of the fascinating things uh, about the way you and I uh, generally look at films. You... Uh... Uh, always have a, a much better sense for the directors and the producers of it. And I get lost in the film itself if I'm going to wind up liking it, which I did very early on, unlike you, because I wasn't worried. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about, you know, is this device working? Is that device working? What, why are they doing it that way? I just got involved with the characters. And within about five or ten minutes, I was absolutely into these characters who are totally dysfunctional who really don't yeah. like each other for a whole bunch of different reasons. Yes. Uh, yeah. And by the way, I was not sure that there was going to be uh, a happy ending uh, if you even consider watching it all the way through, that it, it is, a, is a happier ending or more uplifting ending. And we'll let the rest of the audience decide that for themselves, because I think there could be different viewpoints on that. But I got involved in the characters and... Uh, uh, fortunately, in our family, we've never really experienced that kind of negativity among very close oh, siblings or, or, or relatives. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I began to early on begin to see and be fascinated by the different viewpoints of each one of them to this father that two of them were natural born. They were his children. And the, and the middle right. daughter was actually one that was the... Uh, a daughter of his second wife, so but the only father she had ever known. 
And so the way that the three of them related to the father, uh, and I quickly became a bigger fan of the second one who was actually living in the apartment and taking care of him. Uh, but I began to appreciate why they were, not that they were at each other's throats, but part of it had to do with that they saw themselves as different pecking orders uh, with the same father who each one of them seemed to have loved uh, in their own way, uh, but were jealous of one another because of a responsibility they had or one was an outside interloper uh, or uh, they didn't approve of their lifestyle or something like that. Yeah, a lot, multi-layered dislike. Right. <laughs> so among uh, the girls yeah and also and, and, uh, two, two of the girls had uh, kids of their own and you could see how their dysfunction they were passing on to their children sure. uh, even though they didn't realize it you know yeah necessarily uh and, and what was one of the you mentioned the fact that i tend to like devices and i recognize the yeah and i appreciate that about you i, I like don't it. i get lost in the, if i'm going to like a film or even if i'm not going to like it i get lost in the film as opposed yeah. to that I'm being directed or, or, or pushed in a certain direction. And I've always appreciated about you that you actually recognize that. And well, I don't know about on. that, but I, I, I have a device that I, I recognized right in the beginning. I love the fact that the father is down the hall, the door is cracked, and you can hear the beeping of his heart monitor. Beep, beep. Beep. And, and, he, and he's all, never on screen. He never. He, he doesn't have any dialogue never, at all. He never shows up. Right. right. We never really see them. He's just a guy in a bed Dying. with a beeping machine down the hall, and it's a wonderful device because it makes the father alienated from us as well. Mm -hmm. And it just it. I I really loved after I started to appreciate what the filmmaker is doing. I really truly love this movie, and it's it's getting rave reviews in certain quarters. I think if there's something I don't like about it, it's too good. It's the kind it's the kind of independent film that harkens back to the independent European independent movies of the 60s or so. Um, it also reminded me of John Cassavetes, hmm. the, the character study that he would do with his people. Um, because as you mentioned, all three characters are beautifully developed. They're very different and the conflicts between them become very obvious. Um, but I also saw some Fellini mm. uh, technique later in the film. And if you watch the film, you'll see uh, what I mean. Um, and that's part of the surprise. It's not a surprise ending. I mean, I, the guy is, is dying. And he dies in the end. I don't think that's unfair to say that. But there's a lot that happens at the end mm. <laughs> before he dies. And you're right. The question is, is this a happy ending for the three women or not? You have to judge for yourself. Yeah, but it's I, a I, su I suggest that you watch it to the end. Uh, give oh, it, absolutely. Give it a chance. If, if you don't automatically get wrapped up in the characters, as John and I did uh, at some point, at different points in the film. Uh, yeah. uh, you might like that. And uh, uh, John and I discussed this a little bit before we came on to say, well, what are we going to talk about? And I think uh, probably the most telling sign for people of many in our audience of our age is that this was an art house film. I think, uh, John, you properly pointed yeah. that out. So when we sure. were growing up, this is the kind of thing that you would go, uh, whether it was a, a foreign movie or or uh, uh, Fellini or uh, some other, you would go to an art house to see yeah. this. And this was definitely in that genre. And yeah. uh, it was done, in my mind, magnificently. And the yeah. actors, none of whom were known, were all excellent in their roles, believable. And uh, I, 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 I highly recommend uh, well, let's, let's, you watch Well, let's this. mention their names. Let's mention their names because they're all wonderful. And they're all yeah. reasonably well-known actresses, some more than others. I didn't Not know. Not to me, Carney Coon, Carney Coon, Natasha Leone, and Elizabeth Olsen. Elizabeth right. Olsen, uh, that yeah, was interesting. She's very well, she's very well known. She's 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 uh, the younger sister of uh, the Olsen twins, and yeah. uh, is uh, 
But I, I didn't know that watching it until I checked it afterwards. Uh, but uh, they were all very credible uh, yep. actors, as were the others. They were believable in their role, gritty yeah. uh, uh, New Yorkers uh, uh, who were fulfilling their role as, their, as, a, as a nurse with a die. I mean, yeah. they were all perfectly cast. Yeah. Uh, the director, uh, producer, and writer, and I think editor uh, of the movie is Azazel, uh, Az, Az, Azazel, maybe. Mm. Forgive me for not knowing how to pronounce his name. Jacobs. Um, and uh, I, have to, I have to give him a lot of credit. It's a wonderful film, beautifully put together. And it is an art house film in the sense that I think people need to be prepared for a movie that's going to, it's about an uncomfortable situation and it's going to make you uncomfortable while you're watching it. Uh, but that's part of the genius of the film. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.